Welcome to Unaborted, part two of our conversation with Audrey Warner and Claire Chambers. Uh, if you're tuning into this episode right now and you did not listen to part one, you've got to go back. We, we are doing a four-part episode series on the history of humanism, the key that brought about the destruction of the American culture, the key to unlocking the sexual revolution, the high priests of humanism, the demonic roots of sexuality education as we know it in America today. In other words, how did we get here? You need to go back and listen to part one in this four-part, two-and-a-half-hour conversation with two of the most informed women I know on the history of the sexual revolution in the American culture war, the the, the proxy war attack against Christianity, the, 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 the high priests of humanism that love to just titillate the masses and introduce sexual content to children uh, and, and argue that we're all sexual beings and there's no sexual acts that are taboo. Like basically all of the weird, really kooky stuff going on in America right now that makes you as probably a, just a good mom or dad or Christian kind of go, this is weird. How did we get here? Well, we're answering that question in a four-part series. We're answering the question, how did we get here? <laughs> so we can maybe, maybe uh, get out of this current predicament. And uh, it, so if you're listening to this for the first time, Claire Chambers, 90 years old, wrote a book in 1977 called The Seekus Circle, A Humanist Revolution. Seekus, you got to go back. What's Seek? You got to go back to episode one. <laughs> Don't listen to this if you didn't listen to part one. Go back and listen to that. And please share this widely because in part two today, me, Claire Chambers, and Audrey Werner are going to take a deep dive down the rabbit hole, if you will, um, on who the heck was Alfred Kinsey with his bow ties and his tweed suits and his, I'm just sort of a nerdy professorial figure and I just really want to get at the truth. And of course, his Institute for Sex Research at Indiana University is was renamed the Kinsey Institute when he died. And folks, listen up. It is what? It is, it is April 2023 or May 2023. Last fall, the Kinsey Institute erected a new statue of Alfred Kinsey on campus at Indiana University of the Kinsey Institute. Why would they do that? Clearly, this is a religious figure to them. Buckle up. We're going to answer that question with Audrey Werner and Claire Chambers in this episode. I'm Seth Gruber, and this is Unaborted. <music> So um, Kinsey was considered the father of the sexual revolution. Uh, this was a gentleman, uh, we were talking about going back to the law and waiting for the social science to come forward. And the American Bar Association has founded the American Law Institute because we need to get rid of the Bible-based laws and bring in this man-made law based on social science. And would you say that that was always the goal, Audrey, of the American Law Institute? Uh, yes, I, yeah. they were founded. Uh, people for, don't understand yeah. how significant that organization is, how, how damaging they've been. Yes, yes. They targeted 52 Bible-based laws that once protected marriage, women, and children. And if you look at those laws today, most of them have been eliminated. So this was, as you yeah. said, there was a, a plan, a goal. As early um, as 1962, the American Law Institute was calling for the total legalization of abortion. <laughs> Yes, exactly, exactly. So um, the social science came along with Alfred Kinsey in the 30s and the 40s. This was, he was the professor at Indiana University. He taught a marriage course. Uh, he was, his expertise was the uh, sexual behavior of a gall wasp. He was raised Methodist, but uh, uh, embraced Darwin in his um, uh, upbringing, his schooling. And uh, so uh, his, his idea was to study human sexuality. That, that if, if Darwin were, were evolved from animals and, and we all went in the same, then it, it's not a big crossover to go from a gall wasp to a human being. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Absolutely. wasn't that the whole premise of Darwin? Yes, yeah. yes. But he had, and again, this was. Uh, this is a mom, a stay-at-home mom who's doing the research. And uh, at one point I said, okay, Lord, I, I'm not an expert in Kinsey. And uh, that's when the Lord brought in Dr. Judith Reisman, who was the number one 
expert on Kinsey, and she wrote an excellent yeah. book called Kinsey Crimes and Consequences. Yeah. So where, I haven't I haven't talked you up as much as I should have yet on this our conversation together this morning. Um, you were personally mentored yes. by Judith Reisman yes. and were close friends with yes. with her. For those of you who don't know, if you're because we want this to re, we want people listening to this who have never heard a single thing that we've been saying for the last hour. That's the the whole point. So I'm not (laughs) talking down to you if you're listening, (laughs) but you should know who Judith Reisman is. But again, that's why you're listening to this, right? (laughs) Right. Hosea 4.6 says my people are destroyed for For lack lack of of knowledge. knowledge. And so so Judith Reisman basically built her entire life's ministry and career on debunking the science and influence of Alfred Kinsey, uh, founder of the Reisman Institute, um, and published widely on all of these ideas. So, yes. so, uh, so, guys, Audrey here, Audrey here is essentially picking up where Judith left off. It was yes. mentored by Judith Reisman. So, um, just so everyone knows how significant Reisman is, but um, t- talk. And she t- was sued by uh, Playboy. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Several well, times. <laughs> if you you have shared some interesting stories before. Yes. About the pain in the rear that Judith Reisman was to yes. the modern disciples of Kinsey. <laughs> exactly. You can weave in some of those stories if you'd like, because I think I think they bolster um, the significance of of our ministries and what we're up against. Because yes. when 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 when, they, when these people start manifesting their inner legions and Molochs, you kind of know that you're right over the target. Um, yeah. and, and so anyway, but that's 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 up to you. But but continue in, in terms of your research, your relationship with Reisman. I mean, very few are more grounded in and how this guy got his beginnings. Yes. And I will backtrack to say how Judith got into this was that her precious daughter, um, who was, I I believe, I want to say either somewhere between, uh, I think it was 10 years old, uh, was raped by uh, a neighbor who was 13 or 14 years old. And when she finally found this out through her daughter, um, uh, the response from people would be, well, boys will be boys. This is normal for children to have sex play. And oh she gosh. wondered where that was in her background was in television. Uh, she actually worked for uh, one of my favorite children's programs uh, that I watched growing up, Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, uh, so anyway, she, that's what was her catalyst to start to do the research. And she thought, Where was this idea of boys will be boys, which came from Hefner, but also from Kinsey. And so she started to do the research on Alfred Kinsey uh, and uh, found that he, again, as I said, was uh, portrayed as this professor at Indiana University. If you see pictures of him, he just looks like a nerd. (laughs) He's got this bow tie and this tweed suit. And the media portrayed him as a happily married man with children. As a matter of fact, Hollywood had to come out with a movie to counter what those of us were trying to bring forward about the children data. Um, but the uh, there was a movie that came out, uh, I think it's the Kinsey movie with Liam Neeson, and that portrays him as a researcher, pioneer, who trail, you know, he was the trailblazer on that. the sex That's research. That's a bummer that Liam Neeson agreed to play. Uh, yeah, she that. actually pleaded with him not to do that. Uh, but... Uh, what what really even um, Kinsey's own biographers uh, admitted that he was a homosexual sadomasochist pedophile right. who was very passionate about researching about sex and having no limits, uh, as we've talked about. Yeah. So um, this was a quote, actually, again, <laughs> just reading things, but this is a this is an official state legislature document. This is put out by the American Legislative Exchange Council. They have a a, um, newsletter or such publication that goes out. This is called The State Factor. And uh, Judith helped to contribute to uh, this uh, as well as uh, RSVP Americas, the main catalyst behind it. Uh, The chief researcher there was Dr. Linda Jeffrey. And uh, this is actually an official document uh, by the largest uh, group, which is the American Legislative uh, Exchange Council of State Legislators. So this is official legal information and it's titled Restoring Legal Protections for Women and Children, a Historical Analysis of the State Criminal Codes. 
because RSVP America went into 35 states and found that in the sex event section, Kinsey is the uh, sole authority mm. on normal human sexuality. Well, Audrey, follow the science. I know. <laughs> follow the science. And even Are you a own... science to I know. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me that word doesn't mean what uh, uh, no. they think it means. <laughs> no. And, and a lot of times when the sexuality education is brought in, it's always advertised as uh, science-based, yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, but it's it's Kinsey science that they're using, and his own um, biographer talked about Kinsey and said uh, this was James Jones, and he wrote a biography on Kinsey in 1997. He said the man I came to know bore no resemblance to the canon canonical Kinsey. Anything but disinterested, he approached his work with missionary fervor. He wanted to undermine traditional morality to soften the rules of restraint. Kinsey was a crypto reformer who spent every waking hour attempting to change the sexual mores and sex offender laws in the United States. In Kinsey's case, the personal was always political. Hmm. <laughs> so um, Jones also reports Kinsey concentrated on negative eugenics calling for a program of sterilization that was at once sweeping and terrifying. The reduction of the birth rate of the lowest classes must depend upon the sterilization of perhaps a tenth of our population. So um, Kinsey went into the prisons. He sought out the most sexually deviant criminals because back in the 30s and the 40s, we didn't talk openly about sex. We were a yeah. modest society. And let me pause you, Audrey, just to say yeah. that what, what, guys, what Audrey is about to say and what she's explaining is is how he justified yes. um, his revolutionary yes. religious and political goals. Yes. Um, that just like today, you've got to add the veneer of scientific credibility yes. to sway the people towards your agenda. Exactly. Uh, follow the science, uh, just the professionals, right? This, this sort of new iteration that moved away from the common law, the biblical yes. moral law, right. human history, human nature, yes. human nature is fixed. And yes. so we can study human nature and we can, we can understand man's fallenness yes. and, and we can design laws to keep men free. And right? yes. it's been said that laws are the wise restraints that keep men free. Um, right. But if you're, if you're going to displace Christianity as the dominant worldview, right. Uh, it, that, that, that governs the republic, then the new kooky religions are going to take its place. Right. But now what's the authority that you're going to appeal to 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 get the sheep to follow you? Yes. Science. Yes. Science. So, so I'm just wanting to pause you there to say, Audrey is now, you're going to explain to us how he goes to get, get his, science. his science and his yes. data that gets canonized into so much of our culturally- influential institutions mm -hmm. and organizations and that becomes the new morality to quote uh you claire yes. with some of what they would some of the Sikhs founders would call their project to design yes. a new morality yeah and so did he get this data um claire by interviewing um, monogamous married um individuals who had, who had never no. participated in, a, in an adulterous no. affair. I'm sure he just went to like downtown um, Boise, Idaho, right? right. I'm sure he just went, went to the, like I'm uh, sure he went downtown into the uh, Kansas City, Missouri, <laughs> right? And he just interviewed all the Christians. Uh, where did uh, yeah. he, where did, how, how does this data start building itself? Yes, he went into the prisons. He sought out the most sexually deviant criminals. Okay, so pedophiles. Yes. Rapists. And pedophiles and rapists. And he interviewed them. And so this is the normal sexual behavior of the American male. And this is confirmed by his own people who went back and cleaned up his data. Because originally what was so astounding about his studies was he had thousands of people in his studies. Well, sure. they went back and looked and actually in his adult subjects, there were 5,300. And of that, when they looked, uh, a, a majority of them were aberrant males. They were not your normal a uh, typical American. They were uh, sexual deviants. Yep. So for the female, he interviewed prostitutes because living uh, with someone outside of marriage 
was a crime in America. We had laws for that. That's right. And so um, he interviewed prostitutes. If they lived with their pimp for more than a year, he said this is a typical sexual behavior of the American married female. But probably the most disturbing is the childhood data. And, and it's not that we make this up. It's you can get Kinsey's volume. You can read it for yourself. Here is his data. And that it, was obtained, correct me if I'm wrong, Audrey, by interviewing rapists and pedophiles. Pedophiles, am I right? exactly. So talk about table 34. 34, which is the most infamous table. And we take that to state legislators and to school board meetings to just, this says it all. This is why we have sex ed in the school. Because Kinsey claimed that um, infants are, sec we are all sexual from birth. So that means infants are fully capable of having sex with adults. So this table 34 documents how many orgasms do children have in a certain amount of period of time. Timed so, with the stopwatch. Timed with the stopwatch. Between the ages of? Uh, five months to 14 years of age. And there is a poor four-year-old that had 26 orgasms in 24 hours. So if you wrap your head around that, that means that child was raped yeah. for 24 hours straight. And uh, in, even in Kinsey's book, how does he know that a four-year-old or a five-month-old is having an orgasm? And um, his own photographer, Clarence Tripp, was on the Phil Donahue show, and he talked about it. It's on record um, where he said, and, he, and Kinsey describes this in his book, that these children were crying, they were fa fainting, uh, they were trembling. Uh, it, clearly, trauma was being done to these children but he interpreted it as they were enjoying the experience. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he interviewed. I mean, sadistic and demonic. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like, oh, and he had his. I mean, it, there's no other word for it but demonic. For demonic. For, for that person to to see children crying, convulsing, and screaming in pain, and to say, "Oh, they must enjoy it." I mean, you're, you're talking is, about demonic stuff, yes, obviously. Which no. is Absolutely. part of demonic rituals, yeah, yeah. Uh, by Absolutely. the way. So, um, and again, going back to the Alec paper, it then brings up that in 1998, when the Yorkshire investigators, um, Yorkshire Television did, a, we talked about that on your podcast, did a documentary in Kinsey. And for the first time, because in America, he has always been lionized. He has always been uh, looked upon as this wonderful researcher that, um, uh, you know, that kind of freed us from our uh, Victorian repression and, and morality to anything goes, which what we, we have today. And uh, so uh, Dr. Fritz von Bulisek is uh, actually a Nazi in uh, Germany who collected data roughly and um, to Kinsey's, sent to Kinsey from 1936 to 1956. And this is in, uh, there are German news accounts during the trial of him that uh, indicate that he was sending his research back to Kinsey. And what um, he did was that So he let's, took, let's slow down for a second. So this yes. is a, this is a, a Nazi, Nazi official. Yes. This is a dude who's helping run concentration camps. Yes. Um, uh, again, well, his name was Dr. Audrey. You didn't, you didn't say uh, that. Uh, Remember, yes, he was just following correct. the science. Yes. Right. Uh, but Dr. <laughs> Von ba Balusak or Balusak, yes. however you say it. Yes. Um, uh, so anyways, continue. What was he doing in these concentration camps? Well, it, it actually says in one newspaper, it says the Nazis knew and gave him opportunity to practice his his abnormal tendencies in occupied Poland on Polish children who had to choose between him and the gas oven. After the war, the children are dead, but he lived on. Yeah. That's in uh, a national uh, Zutung. <laughs> I, I'm not good on my German. Uh, in May 15th, 1957 magazine wow. article. So, um, so clearly this was not true science. And this was not <laughs> objective. This think, was subjective. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, guys, <laughs> let, let me just, let's just pause for one second really quick. Yes. Did, did you just hear what was said? All right. And thank you for giving the date and the name of the magazine, <laughs> magazine. and article yes. that cited this. <laughs> guys, the, the, you, ha you got Nazi rapists raping children in Poland sending data Alfred Kinsey, yes. one of the most lauded, celebrated figures by the American left today. So listen, <laughs> when you hear people like me and Audrey and Claire in her book and Charlie Kirk and Michael Knowles and Ben Shapiro and Glenn Beck say, hey, the whole, the, the, the leftist totalitarian walk through the institutions, the humanist revolution, 
and its precepts and goals, uh, it's kind of like a Nazi-esque racist kind of thing. Yes. The goals that they implement, the, the dare I say, the communist deeper goals that they have yes. um, of a one world government, of a, of a yes. totalitarian takeover, uh, of the eugenics philosophy that animates them. Um, guys, it's not a Republican talking point no. to acknowledge the similarities between that and the Nazis, right. that and the occult, right. and a lot of the satanic individuals yes. that have been behind this. And guys, guess what? Uh, targeting, murdering, and abusing children is a common denominator of the Satanists. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, anyways. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a Nazi child raper sending yes. his data to Alpha Yes, Kids. and he becomes the authority on normal human sexuality. And every his science is used in every institution. Because if you think about it, if children are sexual from birth, uh, and I give an example that has been cited somewhere else, but I talked about, and Judith wrote a paper on the hepatitis B vaccine and how the field of medicine, we now look, when I was training for working in the STD uh, HIV clinic, um, you know, the, the, the whole um, premise, and the same was when you were trained as a sex educator, children are sexual from birth. You know, mm -hmm. we are told that. And so we have to help them uh, to handle their sexuality as educators. Right. And then we have to treat because if you're going to have sex outside of marriage, of course, you're going to have disease yeah. and dysfunction. So we have to be able to treat that. But most parents don't know one of the required vaccines is the hepatitis B vaccine. That's a venereal disease that you, um, you know, is given um, and yeah. so Judith had brought this up, that's that right. that's the evidence, Build that out, yeah. um, you know, if a child is raped by a, a deviant <laughs> sexual person who probably has diseases, then we've got to start vaccinating children right. from these diseases so that they don't get these diseases. Because if they get those diseases as children, we've got evidence mm. that they were raped. So Judith Reisman, your mentor, yes. believed that that was a medical example and a medical smoking gun, if you will, that proved yes, yes. some of the um, political goals and priorities yes. um, that were a result of Kinsey science and research. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Wow. And then going back to the law and the model penal code in 1955 of that, uh, the fourth draft that they had, um, of 197 footnotes, the reference was to Kinsey on normal human sexuality. And all of them? On all of it, yes, <laughs> on all of it. So, uh, you, you know, so now you have this wow. idea that anything goes. Um, I love Judith kind of summed it up. She said, according to Kinsey, all sex laws are broken, thus they must be eliminated, especially that of rape. Uh, because uh, non consent is really uh, not, you know, consent is, is really fictional. Right. Um, and so uh, he said uh, sex should be shared with everyone. He said all ex sex experimentation before marriage is going to increase a long-term successful marriage and venereal disease will be reduced dramatically. Wow. He said children are sexual from birth. Uh, adult child sex and incest isn't harmful to children at all. He also said that everyone's bisexual with 37% of men being homosexual. Wow. So you have this set up in the law. And at the time that his first volume came out, that everyone needs to look at that awful childhood data, Table 34, was published in 1948 when we're looking at these timelines. Right. And so prior to that being published, there were four books that were published that endorsed Kinsey. And this came from Judith's book, she found this. The first one was called Sex Habits of American Men, a symposium on the Kinsey Report edited by Albert Deutsch. And it was essays from scholars and citizens who advocated for shifting in standards related to marriage, sex, and family. And they all cited Kinsey as the authority. So now, wow, there are other people that are saying Kinsey's the authority. Then we had The Ethics of Sex Acts by a French jurist, René Gagnon, who viewed children as viable sex objects and women as parasites. Then we had About the Kinsey Reports by Dr. Donald Porter Geddes and Eric Curie, which instilled confidence in the Kinsey Reports as a collection of factual, objective data. 
And then the the uh, last one was wonderful. American Sexual Behavior in the Kinsey Report by ACLU founding member, uh, attorney Morris Ernst mm. and historian David Loth. And Ernst advocated for the legalization of adultery, obscenity, abortion, and he was the personal representative for President Roosevelt during World War II. He was also the attorney, you'll be interested to know, for Kinsey, Sanger, the Kinsey Institute, SICUS, and Planned Parenthood of America. Wow. And what he said was virtually every page of the Kinsey Report uh, touches on some section of the legal code. A reminder that the law, like our social pattern, falls lamentably short of being based on knowledge of facts. So uh, again, mm. we were set up and they, you know, the country was set up that Kinsey was this authority that knew uh, all about this. And um, and I want to I want you to talk more about the American Law Institute's model penal code and some of, some of what your friend Linda Jeffrey found out um, about um, specifically some of the laws regarding the treatment of rape uh, of children. But before you you add that, Audrey, uh, Alfred Kinsey once said, Something along the lines of, and I have the direct quote somewhere, the, the only difference between sexual enjoyment and rape is, is whether the girl's parents are home. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I want you guys to think about that for a second. I mean, the, <clears throat> you can't get more evil yes. than that. Yes. Um, and listen, this was not the, the, this belief in the sexuality of children, which is the driving motivator today. Yes. In the targeting of our children today in yes. 2023 in America yes. was not just a Kinsey thing. Yes. This this was shared. Yes. By the Sexuality Information Education Council of the United States. And and Claire, you here cite the Sikhs general information pamphlet that published in 1968, observing, quote, the need to understand oneself as a sexual human being, that all children are born and grow up as sexual beings. And then Lester Kirkendall, who you're going to talk to us about in just one second here, Claire, mm -hmm. uh, uh, elaborates more on this in his Sika study guide number one. And remember, we, guys, the Sika study guides were kind of the precursor to sensitivity training. Right. Uh, and, and we're publishing and citing all of their friends and board members of Sika right. uh, as just following the science. Um, Lester Kirkendall writes in Sika study guide number one in 1969, quote, once and for all, adults must accept as fact there's that language of science that young people of all ages are sexual beings with sexual needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the language yes. of pedophiles. Yes. And so who does Kinsey necessarily have to go interview to get his data? Pedophiles. pedophiles. Yes. So Audrey, you just gave us a wonderful primer on yes. the impact of those ideas yes. in our laws, but talk more about how far that rabbit hole goes down yes. with how those ideas and science about the sexuality of children actually had major familial and child consequences for how rape and pedophilia was treated. Can you build that exactly. out for, for our listeners? Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode today. Part two of our four-part series here with Claire Chambers, one of the first women to know it all, to know all the humanist circles and organizations and individuals and revolutionaries from the 60s and early 70s that were viciously attacking the American culture, the, the Judeo-Christian worldview um, that was assumed as the norm in the American culture and that provided the basis for most of the laws that protected the family and children and marriages, because we understand that as goes the family, so goes society. So if you're going to revolutionize society, you have to attack the family. Do you understand that? You have to attack children. Listen, this is not a Republican talking point, as you just heard. This stuff has real consequences. Kinsey knew that. So, so in this next episode, um, we are going to talk about how Kinsey's bunk social science on sex actually became used as the 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 follow the science uh, academic credible proof that actually then becomes used to bolster 
the agenda to change those uh, those Judeo Christian laws that protected the family, marriage, and children. If 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 Hugh Hefner was the bridge between Kinsey and culture. Then in this next episode, we're going to talk about how Kinsey social science also gets bridged into law through the American Law Institute and their assault on Judeo-Christian laws specifically designed to protect the family. Guys, ideas have consequences and bad ideas have victims. And in this next part three episode that you need to stay tuned for, we're going to explain and expose how Kinsey's follow the science data and research actually becomes used to start changing laws in America that decrease penalties for rapists and pedophiles to attack the family and sexualize children. You're not going to want to miss part three. Please send this part two to your friends, family members, and coworkers. Not very many people know who Alfred Kinsey is. And if you want to start understanding why Drag Queen Story Hour is happening and and uh, and trancing the kids and, and, and convincing them to chop off their genitalia and pop them, pump them full of of, of cross sex hormones and puberty puberty blockers that sterilize them and don't let them have kids. Like you want to start understanding all this, you got to go back to Alfred Kinsey. Please share this episode widely and stay tuned for part three as we dive into the legal consequences of these ideologies and ideologues of the humanist revolution in America. Until next episode, I'm Seth Gruber, and this is Unaborted. 